Simon Says Social and the Systems Lounge. And I want to welcome everyone today to the 2017 Business Systems Virtual Summit, where you learn all about the systems that our speakers use to get things done. Today, I am super excited to have Marta Cordell joining us. We are going to discuss wellness hacks for entrepreneurs. So Marta Cordell is a certified health and nutrition coach. She is a certified associate diabetes educator. She's director of the Thermography Institute in Dallas, and she's owner of the Full Bloom Wellness Solutions. Her mission is to make healthy living simple and accessible to everyday, very, very busy people. And her passion is helping people to achieve their own personal vision of wellness through small incremental changes that they can embrace every day with joy and excitement. This is a super important topic for all of those who, like me, tend to schedule their day out and, wait a minute, forget, guess who? <laughs> so we're gonna try and solve that problem today with Marta. Marta, welcome, I am so excited to have you here. Thank you, Marisa, I am so excited to be here and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, so appreciate you. And uh, I'm so glad that you're uh, bringing this information to all of your listeners. Yes, this is super important for them. So let's begin at the beginning. What is wellness? Yeah, so you know, for a long time, we really kind of looked at wellness as the absence of being sick, right? So our, our healthcare system kind of promotes that. Right. You know, in order to get well, you get not sick anymore, right? <laughs> That's really not what wellness is. Wellness is so much more than that. And, and wellness really incorporates um, all things. So physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, you know, all of these things constitute wellness. So you really have to look at things from all of these different areas. And, uh, and so really being well means thriving you know, through all of the challenges that you have in your life and through all of the different things that come about, really thriving through those things and not just surviving, not just languishing, but, uh, but really being well. I really like the way that you um, define it as thriving because I think a lot of us think really, oh, well, if I'm not sick, why do I need a wellness routine, right? So, you know, I think, I think that that's the operative phrase is that you want to be thriving. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what a wellness routine even is. Like, I don't even know where to begin on that. What does that look like? Right. Yeah, and you know, so many people struggle with that. And, uh, and it takes time to kind of develop that for yourself. But you have to start with baby steps, right? You have to start with one thing. And if you think about it this way, so um, when did you learn to brush your teeth? You know, you were probably little. You may not even remember. Right. <laughs> right? But there was a time that you didn't know how to do that, that that wasn't part of your routine, you know? So they had to teach you to do that. So, uh, but eventually, I mean, you don't even think about doing that anymore, do you? You know, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, it's just part of your routine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's these things that we want to put on autopilot, you know, that you really, you know that you need to do them, you know that they need to be part of your everyday life. So building a routine into your everyday makes it super easy so that you don't have to remember to do this, remember to do that. And, oh my gosh, I forgot to do this this, t this day, but I remembered that day. You know, if it's a routine and you do it every day, it just becomes second nature. And then you don't have to think about it. And we all need one more thing that we don't have to think about, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. So why is it important for me to have this wellness routine? I mean, I'm doing okay, I'm busy, but I'm doing just fine. Right. So <laughs> do you want to be just doing okay? Or do you want to be like really killing it? I mean, just really getting up in the morning and having great energy and thinking, okay, what do I have going on today? Because I can't wait to get started. You know, do you want to feel great all day? Or do you want to kind of fall off at three o'clock in the afternoon and go, wow, I just had a really tough day. Now I'm exhausted. Right. How am I going to even think about making dinner for my family, right. you know, and getting exercise in tonight? It is not even happening because I'm going <laughs> to eat, right? right. <laughs> so, so you don't want to be in that situation. And, and yeah, maybe you're keeping up and maybe you're doing okay. And, and you don't feel like, you know, uh, like you're sick or anything. But even still, you know, you could feel better. 
Right. You could feel better. You could meet those challenges of your day a lot more easily. Right. And, uh, and not be so exhausted at the end of the day that you can't even think about doing all the things that you want to do with your family. Yeah. So. Good point. Really good points. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, okay, so when I think of the word routine, I think about scheduling. Mm -hmm. You know, let's talk mm -hmm. about why it's important that you really do put together a schedule so that you can get there and be on, what did you call it earlier? Autopilot. Autopilot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so how you begin to do that, first and foremost, you know, scheduling is a discipline, right? And anybody yeah. who's in business knows that scheduling is a discipline. Right. <laughs> You have to put the big things in first. You have to put the important things in first. You don't want to put all the little tiny picky things in and then realize, oh, I didn't do the big important thing that I was supposed to do today, right? right? So you have to put the important things in first. And there are some things that are very essentially important to life. So <laughs> breathing, right? Can it water. Water. <laughs> yeah, you can't live with for very long without water, right. you know, even though we think we can. Right. Um, and, and eating. Eating is crucially important to being alive. Yeah. You know, I mean, there aren't very many more things that are important than that. Right. So, so you really have to drop those big things in first, you know, and you really have to put some time in your schedule every day to do the things that are going to support your life and support your health and your wellness. Mm -hmm. um, so, so scheduling some time to not only eat breakfast, but make breakfast. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be a complicated breakfast. I mean, you don't have to get up and cook this massive breakfast for yourself, but, uh, but some time to, you know, go for what you have out of the refrigerator and, and put it together and put it on a plate and actually sit down at the table and take a breath for a minute and, and eat your breakfast, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't digest our food very well if we're frantic and crazy, you know, uh, our bodies don't eat that way. When we're in flight and flight mode, oh, we don't adjust, you know, it shuts that off. So, um, so we really have to make the time to do the things that are going to be supportive of us. So as entrepreneurs, we can do all the wonderful things that we want to do, you know, all of those, those great things that are our life's work. Yeah. So we have to have life in order to do our life's work. Right. Right. So, uh, so really just scheduling, you know, scheduling time to, to prepare, scheduling time to, to shop, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we get to the end of the week and we're like, oh my gosh, I have to go to the grocery store, you know? But did we even sit down and decide, what are we gonna eat this week? Yeah. What do we need from the grocery store? Or are we just kind of flying by the seat of our pants and grabbing whatever, which leaves us open to grabbing like all kinds of stuff that just scream at us from the shelves, right? That's right, that's <laughs> that's right. That's 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so if you, have, if you have that plan in place, then when you go to the grocery store, you do it in an orderly way, you know exactly what you need, you get in and out faster, it's going to save you time in the long run, right? Yeah. And, and then when you get home, you have all of the things that you're going to need in order to prepare your meals for the week, you know, and that's really, really important because if you already have everything, that saves you trips to the store, yep. which saves you time. Yeah. You know, you also make healthier choices that way because you've already kind of pre-planned that. So what I'm hearing you say is kind of a, a it, it's a, it's a switch to plan yourself into your schedule first, like, it is. you know, plan your morning routine, plan the meals you're going to have. Like, and it sounds like, oh my gosh, this is just going to add more. But if I'm healthier and I'm thriving after having done this. I'm going to have more to give to my business. Yes, okay. yes, you will. And, and, and this is the thing too, it, it seems like an expenditure of time to plan, you right. know, but planning, okay, statistically, you know, just in general, planning, one minute of planning saves 10 minutes of time later on. Wow. So, <laughs> you know, it's a 10 for one return. So, right. so it's hard to argue with that, you know. So, so if you'll just spend a few minutes planning, right. you know, what you want to eat, then it's going to save you time at the grocery store. It's yeah. going to save you time having to go back to the grocery store and get stuff that you didn't get because you didn't think about it. Right. It's going to save you time when you get ready to prepare your meals because you have everything and it's already there. 
you know, so, and it's going to save you time in the evening going, oh, what am I going to cook? Yeah. Oh, what I'm going to make for dinner. You already know what you're going to make for dinner. You already have a plan. Yeah. You know, so, so it makes it a lot easier to do all of those things. And in the long run, it really does save you a lot of time. So what might that look like? Like if I am, you know, planning out my meals, for instance, because, you know, time is, is, uh, you know, one of those resources that we simply do not get back. And if I am spending said time <laughs> planning yeah. out these meals, I feel like I'm taking away from something else. But what I'm hearing you say is if I plan out these meals, I'm actually saving myself a lot of time and, you know, and, and energy in the long run. So talk to me yeah. a little bit about what that might look like to plan out my meals. I'm assuming that we're not talking spreadsheets of information. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Update, you know? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> so, so really, it's just sitting down and, and, you know, meals don't have to be complicated even, right? Uh, so one of the things that uh, that's really great about like the Mediterranean diet, for instance, is that they don't do a lot of cooking. You know, there's not a lot of cooking involved. It's really putting things together. Right. You know, so there's so many ways that you can, you know, uh, any grocery store now has uh, pre-chopped vegetables, you know, right. that you can buy and that kind of stuff. Right. So it doesn't have to be complicated, okay. but sit down and plan out, okay, I'm going to have to have three meals a day, mm -hmm. right, for seven days. Yep. And, and you can even do a little grid. I have a grid uh, that's made for uh, meal planning. Okay. You know, and uh, so you can sit down and just kind of drop the, the information into a little grid mm -hmm. and just say, okay, these are the things that I want to eat through the week, you know, and, and reuse things, yes. you know. Uh, so, so it's really just saying, okay, so today I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then tomorrow I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then from that, just building a grocery list. Then you have a targeted grocery list yes. that, that really is going to give you exactly what you need for the week, you're not going to have a bunch of waste, which is going to save you money too, which is right. nice. Right. So you don't have all those little leftovers hanging out in the kitchen. You don't have the bits and ends that, uh, you know, that you bought and you really didn't use. Right. You know, so it's going to save you money at the grocery store as well. But, uh, but really um, taking that time to sit down and figure out what am I going to eat? you know, for the next seven days, mm -hmm. um, really gives you that ability to, um, to make sure that you have everything that you need and you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. This is the other thing. So many of you probably heard of decision fatigue. Yes. So, <laughs> and it's very well documented that, you know, we can only make so many decisions every day. Right. And as a busy entrepreneur, how many decisions do you make in a day? Oh my gosh, I don't right? even know. <laughs> a lot of decisions every day. And so by the time you get to the point where you have to decide what you're going to eat, then what are you going to do? You just forget it. Whatever's at hand. Yeah, whatever you know? is right there. Yeah. And if you, if you planned well, then what's at hand is good and healthy. And it's already made and it's already ready. Yeah. But if you haven't planned well, then what you're going to reach for is just whatever's there, the chips that are sitting on the counter or the, you know, the, the candy that's sitting in the bowl in your desk, <laughs> right. you know, so, so really planning your meals is going to make it just easy and quick and simple so that you don't have to think about it. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to make that decision. Yeah. First of all, when you're hungry, your brain's right. not working that well. Right. But uh, but then also, you know, when you're when you're dealing with some of that decision fatigue, it's almost autopilot for meal planning because you've already figured it out ahead of time, so you know exactly what you're going to have. It really is. And if you don't feel like having that one thing for that day, opt for the other thing that you're going exactly. to have tomorrow. You know, exactly. So yeah, that's yes. pretty cool. So let's talk about stress for a minute. Yeah. How many entrepreneurs out there are not just really overwhelmed with stress, right? I mean, all of us are. Yeah. How can a wellness routine reduce my stress? Because I feel like it just adds one more thing or multiple things to my to-do list that now I have to try and fit into my chaotic day. Yes. So, uh, so proper planning, as we know, with anything is going to reduce the stress. You know, if you, if you have a plan, then it feels surmountable. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a plan, then all of a sudden you've got this big looming thing coming at you and you're like, oh, I don't even know how I'm going to deal with that. And so you don't, right? 
our right. tendency is just not to deal with it. Right. <laughs> you know, we, we end up skipping meals or, you know, we just grab something quickly and it's not going to be the best thing. Right. You know, uh, so, so it makes it easier to even think about, to even wrap your brain around trying to get this done, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a plan. Yeah. So all you have to do is follow the plan, right? Right. So it's already laid out for you. So there again, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress about it. All you have to do is follow the plan. Okay. And, uh, and so that reduces stress in and of itself. The other thing is that if you're feeding yourself well, if you're healthy, if you're, if you're in, good, in good shape, if you're in good uh, health, then you're going to deal with the stress a lot better. You right. know, so instead of, you know, getting to the end of the day and going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do about dinner? You know, instead of having a meltdown, <laughs> you know, you pull out your plan, and you go, oh, look, here's my dinner all laid out. Right. All I have to do is go in the kitchen and execute my plan. Right. So, uh, so it really does reduce a lot of stress and it just takes the guesswork out of it. So instead of stressing 21 times right. in a week, you know, you're spending a couple of hours at the most, you know, and once you get good at this, I mean, I can sit down and do a meal plan in probably 10, 15 minutes. Right. You know, once you get like a routine of different recipes that you're using and a routine of like things that, you know, your family likes and that kind of thing, once you get kind of into that routine, then it just becomes just second nature. You sit down, you write it out, you're done. Mm -hmm. you know? So, so the more you practice, the better you get. So it's really as simple as waking up in the morning, you know, showering, brushing your teeth, doing all of those kind of morning things that you do to maintain yourself. This is really the same thing. We're just talking about planning your meals, you know, planning a system of what, staying hydrated, what are other things that might be included in, you know, in, in maintaining yourself and, and getting yourself to the point where you're thriving. Right. So, so there are a few crucial things, right? So we know that, uh, that eating is important. Yeah. Uh, hydration is also important. Right. Movement. Getting some movement in your day is important. Mm -hmm. you know? Also, um, it, I'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, so I just listened to this, uh, this wonderful thing the other day, and they were talking about your mitochondrial health, right? Okay. And how your mitochondrial health applies to your energy. Okay. So one of the things that you can do to actually build your mitochondrial health, which uh, increases your energy power plant, mm -hmm. is to uh, have some kind of play every day for at least 20 minutes. Uh -huh. so, yes. And so that could be, you know, as simple as just sitting down with a book that you enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, or getting outside, playing with a dog, you know, uh, jumping in the pool and taking a swim, yeah. you know, whatever that might be. But our mitochondria, our cells, you know, at, at our cellular level, we need that. We need that rest and relaxation, that playtime. Right. You know, so so that's one of the important things too to to build into your day. Right. So what would you tell the busy entrepreneur who feels like they don't have time to exercise? Right. So do you have time to be down for a week and be sick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you have time to have a migraine? Um, <laughs> you, don't, you know, so you really, you don't have time for your body not to be in best shape. Yeah. You know, you really don't have time for that because that causes us to, to have breakdowns that causes us to, you know, have brain fog, to not be in our best right. uh, mental state. Right. right. It causes us not to, to have the energy that we need. Mm -hmm. so that, that's what we really don't have time for. Yeah. We really don't have time to not be in our very best shape and to be able to bring our A game every day. Right. Because we know, I mean, this stuff just flies at us, right? Right. And, uh, and so you have to be able to adapt and you have to be able to think and you have to be able to, to really function well. And if you're not taking care of yourself, then, you know, for a week that might wash, but <laughs> after a while, your body's going to go, hello, you have to stop. And, and eventually it will make you stop. Yeah. You know, you will hit a wall and you will stop. Yeah. And no time for that. Yeah. You I've know? also heard that you don't necessarily have to, you know, take an hour out of your day to work out. Working out incrementally throughout the day, it all adds up and it's all the same in the end. Is that oh, absolutely. Yeah. And 
one of the very best things that you can do is, uh, is called interval training. And, you know, people think that, uh, you know, interval training has got to be this like hour long thing and you back and forth between, no. <laughs> so <laughs> interval training can be as simple as getting up in the morning and doing like a minute of exercise, like intensive exercise, mm -hmm. and resting for a minute, and then doing another minute of intensive exercise, and then resting for a minute, and then off to the shower and breakfast, and you know, off into your day. Right. So it doesn't have to be a long extended period of time. Absolutely. You know, a five minute walk around the block, right? That's enough to get your blood pumping, to get your brain working again. Mm -hmm. And what I recommend is actually taking you know, small blocks of time, I, I would say even set an alarm for yeah. like every hour. Yeah. Get up every hour, stretch, breathe, you know, get some movement in. Um, you can keep uh, exercise bands or small hand weights at your desk. Yeah. You can get up and do jumping jacks. You know, you know I work from my home, so <laughs> I can like run in place and do jumping jacks. Nobody's going to look at me strangely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But even if you're in an office building, you know, um, you know, just take a few minutes, go walk a couple of flights of stairs, Yeah. you know, come back to your desk, you're going to come back refreshed, mm -hmm. back your brain working better, you're going to tackle the, the challenges that you have a whole lot better than you would if you didn't take that break at all. Yeah. So it's kind of like the Pomodoro technique, which is what I teach my clients to do work absolutely uninterrupted for a 25 minute block of time and then take five minutes off. You know, yes. go do something fun, get up and walk away from your desk. And, mm -hmm. and it really does get those creative juices flowing so you can come back and tackle the next thing that you need to accomplish. Right. Yes, yeah. that's so true. And, uh, and so really, you know, taking those breaks throughout the day because it is cumulative. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to do an exercise for an hour for it to be you know, counted. You know, right. you can count every minute that you do. Right. So it is cumulative. So if you do that 20 times a day, you know, then you've got 20 minutes of exercise. You do it for one minute, you know, but uh, so it all counts. Yeah. You know, and um, if you park farther out in the parking lot, you know, you hear people say park out farther in the parking lot and yep. walk in, right? Mm -hmm. So that counts. Yeah. So all of those little things you can add up. Now it is good to, uh, to do like an extended period of exercise every now and then. And I'm talking 15, 20 minutes, right? You know, because you also have, uh, kind of a law of diminishing returns, right? You know, at a certain point, you're no longer doing yourself any good, right? Right. right. You can keep exercising and exercising and exercising, but your body's just going to shut down and it's going to say, yeah. "I'm not burning anymore." Yeah. You know? So, so you do reach a point where you're not doing yourself any good. Right. So really, just 15, 20 minutes, and then doing those cumulative exercises during the day, and uh, that really will make a big difference. And so then you don't have to have that. Uh, allocated block of time, right? You know, you can kind of fit it in in between some stuff, or yeah. you know, say, okay, this fifteen minutes, this is mine. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. is what I'm going to do for the next fifteen minutes, and no one will interrupt you. So, and I think that's going to help a lot of our viewers because you know, a lot of times you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have an hour to go to the gym. Well, I do have five minutes on every hour to go and do something else where I'm not sitting at my computer or, or whatever the case may be. So that's, you know, Marta, thank you so much for being here and sharing your knowledge and expertise. I really, really appreciate that. Can you tell the, the listeners out here how they can reach out to you and get in touch with you and perhaps take advantage of some of the resources you have to offer or maybe even work with you on getting their own wellness um, routine set up? Absolutely. So, so the best way to reach me is through my website um, at www.runfullbloom.com. And that's all spelled out. So yeah. not the letter R and U. That link will be right down there. Guys. <laughs> Good. So, uh, but, uh, but you can also reach me. Uh, my number is 972-948-1183. You're welcome to call me directly and just discuss, you know, what is it that you need? Yeah. Uh, I also highly, uh, uh, recommend that you sign up for my newsletter um, on my email list because with that you also get a wonderful guide to sleep. Nice. <laughs> sleep is the other crucially important thing. Definitely get that on your schedule. <laughs> but, uh, but that gives you a really good, uh, it's a little ebook about sleep and all these techniques for improving your sleep and uh, can really be helpful as well. Very cool. Yeah. Thank and you so much. Well, I'll also have a um, I also have a freebie just for this show. Nice. It's going to be a roadmap 
for, uh, for reaching your wellness easily and quickly. And uh, so that'll also be available. Very cool. Thank you. Guys, look for her links down below this video or beside this video, wherever they, they show up on your screen. And um, for those of you who are part of the All Access Pass to the 2017 Business Systems Virtual Summit, stick around because in just a few minutes, we are going to be coming back with Marta and we are going to dive deeper into some of the things you can do to get your wellness routine set up and running. Thank you so much, Marta, for being here. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in the next interview.